modes. We've all heard of modes. We're aware that we need to know our modes. But what is a mode? Well, for our street theory purposes, I just want to think of a mode as a scale. They're the same thing. Those terms are interchangeable for us. All right? Over this next series of several lessons, I'm going to show you various ways to approach learning your modes. Now, why would we want to learn all of these different modes? We're actually going to learn seven different modal scales. Why do we need to know all these? Because when we're soloing over something, we need to play the appropriate scale that fits the song. If we have a really heavy, dark sounding song, we're going to want to play a heavy, dark sounding scale over the top of that. If we have a happy song, we're going to play something that's happier. We're going to pick a scale or a mode that sounds happier. Each mode or scale that we're going to learn has its own flavor, its own sort of vibe, right? Kind of its own color. I like to use the word mood when I think of modes because each mode has its own mood. Some are dark, some are happy, some are kind of funky, some are a little spacey. Each one has their own sound. So to start with, we need to basically get those sounds in our ear so we can understand the difference when we talk about the difference between a Dorian mode and a Lydian mode. We'll know those by the sound. So in this lesson, we're going to take a look at the seven different scales, modes, that we're going to learn, and we're going to look at how to build those and then check out what they sound like so we can start to get them in our ear. We're going to start with our first mode, and the good news is you already know this one because it's what we learned as our major scale. Our G major scale is also called the Ionian mode. So that's just another name for a G major scale, or in this case, a major scale of any kind can be called an Ionian mode. So remember how we got that scale was we basically used our formula and looked at our interval configuration of whole steps and half steps. So we went whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. And that gave us our major scale or our Ionian mode. So every one of the other modes that we're going to learn has a unique whole step and half step configuration, as all scales do. So we're going to look at those and see how we can take those interval configurations and play them all in the same key. Sometimes we call this parallel modes. In other words, we're playing them all starting with G as our root note. That's the best way to hear the difference between these scales. So we're starting with G as our root note, and we're going to play a Dorian mode. How we would know how to play a Dorian mode is to look at the formula for a Dorian mode. The formula for a Dorian mode is whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step. Now, we can think about it that way, right? Sometimes when we get into a lot of these different interval configurations like that, it may get confusing when we're thinking of whole steps and half steps going across the strings. So here's the other way that I want to show you how we're going to look at modes and the differences between them. And that's by thinking of scale degrees. Right? When we start here and play our major scale, that's our first degree of our scale, our second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, right? Numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We know when we're dealing with our various intervals, we may flat one, we may change one up, but we're always thinking of how it relates back to the major scale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So for our Dorian mode, that I already gave you the interval whole step and half step configuration, the other way to look at that is like this. It's built by taking the first note, second note, flat third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and flat seventh. And then we're back to the octave. So how the Dorian mode differs from the major, or the Ionian mode, is it has the flat third, and it has the flat seventh. So those are the two notes that are different. Oftentimes when we're thinking of a lot of different scales, we tend to look at them as just totally these different things. But a lot of times it's just maybe one or two notes that are different that create a new scale. So being able to identify those is going to be really key to this lesson. So our Dorian, once again, one, two, flat three, four, five, six, flat seven. We're just going to do it in one octave. So from G to G, that is my shape. That would be G Dorian. 
So let's play G Phrygian. I'm just gonna step through these formulas just like that. So G Phrygian starts on G and it's got my one, my flat two, my flat three, my four, my five, my flat six, and my flat seven. So you can see there's quite a few notes that are different there, right? Obviously, we've got this note, this note. There's a lot of different notes going on. So that's what gives it its unique sound. So G Phrygian, let's play that scale. That's my G Phrygian. Our next mode we're gonna learn is G Lydian. So Lydian is built from the one, two, three, sharp four, five, six, and seven. And then back to my one. So that's pretty unique because we've taken that fourth note and we sharped it, which means going up or raising it a half a step. That would give me G Lydian. Our next mode is G Mixolydian. One, two, three, four, five, six, flat seven. It starts out a lot like the major scale, but then we flat the seventh note. So there's one note difference there for the mixolydian. That would be the G mixolydian. The G, our next mode is gonna be G aeolian. Now the aeolian scale, just like our major scale, G major is also called G ionian. It's got both a sort of normal scale name being major, and then the mode name, same thing with this next scale, which is Aeolian, the Aeolian mode. It's also called the natural minor scale. So if someone asks you to play a, the minor scale or the natural minor scale, that's the same thing as this mode, which is the Aeolian mode. Our Aeolian mode is basically spelled like this. One, two, flat three, four, five, flat six, flat seven, and back to one. That's our minor scale or our Aeolian mode. That's our root note. We're playing these all off of G, so that would be G Aeolian. And our last mode that we're gonna learn is G Locrian. And it's gonna sound like this. We spell it by going one, flat two, flat three, four, flat five, flat six, and flat seven. So you notice there are a lot of notes that are different there, right? So actually there's only two notes that are the same as the major scale. The one and the four was the only ones that I didn't say were flat, right? Now you'll have all of these patterns in your chart so you can check out and see how, you know, how they look when you're looking at them on the fretboard. But all you have to think about is basically playing this one octave. Now we can play these scales all the way through the second octave and all the way up just like we did with our major scale, right? So we'll talk about that in the next, in a couple of the next lessons. But for starters, just getting that from G to G is where you're gonna hear the difference in sound. So while we're talking about the difference in sound, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to play these and talk through them. I'm gonna play each one, and I'm gonna talk a little bit through as I'm playing, but I'm just playing these over a G note. So just over a droning G, right? This is all that's gonna be going on, and I'm gonna play all of the different G modes. When I do this, you're gonna hear those differences we talked about, those moods of each mode, you're gonna hear that come out of there, right? You're gonna hear that, wow, this scale sounds dark and minor. This scale sounds pretty happy. So listen for that as I play through these. So we're just playing over a G note so we can play any of our G modes. So I'm gonna go through all of the G modes we just learned, see if you can hear the difference. So we'll start with our G major or our Ionian mode. How about the G Dorian? How about the G Phrygian? That one sounds quite a bit different. How about the G Lydian?
G mixolydian. How about G aeolian? And then finally the G locrian. So that is a great way to hear the differences between the modes. So hopefully you could hear that each mode has its own sound, so you may need to call on it to solo over a particular progression. Later on, we'll look at when to use what mode where, but for starters, just playing over a drone note like that allows you as a soloist to create this type of sound or the mood that you want to create. So each one of those modal scales has its own unique spelling. Here is one of the secrets to understanding which one to use and how they differ. And that is to look at all of the spellings together. So we see the major scale has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So what's a neat trait with these modes is that third note of the major scale, that's a major third. There are three modes that have that major third note in them. So basically there are three modes that are major sounding. Those modes are the major, obviously, the Lydian, and the Mixolydian. The other four modes all have a flat third or a minor third in them, which makes them sound minor. The Dorian, Phrygian, Aeolian, and Locrian are minor sounding modes. So right there's a good way to basically divide them into the major sounding modes or the minor sounding modes. Now if we examine, for example, the major modes a little bit more carefully, we'll see that from our major scale, if I want to play a Lydian, all I have to do is change that one note. So that note moves from here, which is the four, up there to the sharp four. There's only one note difference between major and Lydian. If I go back to the major, and then I want to play the mixolydian, there's only one note difference between the major and the mixolydian, right? So the mixolydian has the flat seven in it. So this tells me that six of the seven notes of our scale between, for example, major and mixolydian are exactly the same notes. So if I start out and I'm soloing and I just play these, is that major or mixolydian? It's hard, you can't tell because I haven't even got to the note that changes it, right? So that tells me that it's pretty important to know which notes are the ones, basically the key notes, the characteristic notes that make that mode that mode. So what makes a mixolydian? That flat seven. But it has to be played with the major third. So looking at the unique attributes of each mode is really important. For example, our mixolydian scale has got the flat seven, but it's the only scale that has the flat seven and the natural third or the major third. So those two notes. All of our minor scales also have the flat seven, but they've got the flat third. So if I really want to bring out the mixolydian flavor, what I want to do is emphasize, is emphasize those two notes, my flat seven and that major third. If I want to bring out the characteristic sound of the Lydian scale, I would say, well, what's the interesting thing about the Lydian? It's got that sharp four and the major third. Hear how that sounds really unique? That's got a really unique sound to it, right? That can only be found with the Lydian scale or the Lydian mode. So it's important to emphasize those unique notes. So it's really awesome if you would sit down and sort of map out all of the unique notes in the modes. We've got this on a chart for you. So if you take a look at that, you'll see things like the difference between a Dorian mode and an Aeolian mode, just one note difference, and it's this note. So the Dorian's gonna have this one, the Aeolian's gonna have that one. So if you wanna sound like you're playing in Aeolian versus Dorian, it's gonna be really good to emphasize that note.
Maybe land on that note a little bit more often. Maybe tie it together in your runs. If you're doing a lick, maybe end on that note or emphasize it in there. So knowing how to spell the modes, meaning one, two, flat three, four, five, six, flat seven, that is really important, not only so you can play them, but also so you can compare those to other modes and really understand what's going on and what is it that makes you know, the Locrian scale sound unique. Why does the Lydian scale sound like no other scale? If you get that down, it's going to really help you tie your ear into learning and understanding when and where to play each mode. So practice these shapes, play them as much as you can to get them down, play them over this G drone. Now remember, these are in G, we could do this exact same thing and go up and play a C drone note and just play all of the modes right here in my C position, play C major and C Dorian. So we can move these all over the place, which would be a good idea to get used to hearing them in different keys, but practice these patterns and get them down. That will go a long way to you understanding how we can use modes. And in the next video, we'll look at a different option for understanding the modes.